Today we're focusing in on one of the aspects, and that is growing in service. And there are a lot of people here who serve. And I want to encourage you from Scripture that this is the truth that God has presented to us. Because the Bible has a lot to say theologically about who God is and a lot to say how God has created and crafted and gifted each one of us. There's a lot of things that I can say about this subject and Scripture has a lot to say. But this morning I'm going to focus in primarily three things. And this is the sermon in a sentence, right? This is what we're going to talk about. Number one, I want you to know that you are gifted. You are gifted people. And we're going to talk about what Scripture has to say about that. Second, you are responsible. You indeed have been given a gift. And you and I, each of us, have opportunity and responsibility to steward, to use the gift that God has placed in us for the benefit of others. And the third thing that we're going to focus on this morning is that then each one of us will be and are accountable for that gift. You are gifted, you are responsible, and someday you are going to give an account to God how you and I used His grace for His glory and the benefit of other people. And so these are important things that are true about you, that are true about us. And I want to ask you to open your mind, to open your heart and respond not to what I am saying, but what the Lord says about these things. We have to recognize that we are only physically on this planet for a short amount of time. As we grow older, and if you talk to the oldest people among us, they would say to you and to I that life goes by quick. The days sometimes are long, but the years are short. So let us be a congregation who engages with what God is doing and inviting us to join with Him and what He's doing through us. Scripture is clear that it talks about Jesus Christ is the head and uses the analogy of a body. That he is the head. He is the one that directs. He is the one that guides. And connected to him, we then are the body of Christ. Everything in our body has a purpose. Everything was designed by God to function as it was called and created to do. We are similar in that way. When we are connected to Christ, we now are connected to each other. And we again have opportunity and responsibility connected to accountability to God. So let's think about God's design, his word for each of us, okay? I'm talking specifically to each one of us and collectively as we gather together to represent Christ well here in your home, in your school, in the community, and the world. So here's the first point, and their notes are available if you want to follow along. I typically keep pretty close to them, but we'll see how it goes today, okay? (laughs) Number one, you are gifted by God, okay? I want you to say this with me, okay? And I'm going to pick it first person. I am gifted by God. Let's say that together. I am gifted by God, okay? I want you to believe that because scripture says it is true. And we're going to hit a number of scripture passages. So you're going to be turning to various places. There are Bibles in front of you there to use or on your phone or in the notes. This is the first passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I have to dip into some of these and come out of them because we're stitching them together. 1 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 4, talking about the gifts in context of knowing Christ and fitting together as the body of Christ. So this is what it says. 
Now, there are varieties of gifts, many types of gifts, but there is one Spirit, but the same Spirit working in all of us and empowering us with these gifts. And there are varieties of service, how we can serve and use these things in a variety of ways. But there is the same Lord. So there is unity amongst our diversity. There is sameness in our uniqueness and differences. And there are varieties of activities. But it is the same God. We have the Spirit, we have the Son, the Lord, we have the God working in us and through us and gifting us. But, we, but it is the same God who empowers them all in how many people? You, you can read, that's good, right? <laughs> At least one of you can read, right? Everyone. Are you an everyone? You're an everyone. You cannot say that you are not gifted. That's a lie. It is against what Scripture has to say. You are a gifted individual because God says you are a gifted individual. So if you think that, you have no purpose, you have no meaning, you have no reason to live or be here, that is a lie because God gives you a reason. You are an extension of the will of God in the sense of he talks to us and gives us opportunities. You are gifted. The Apostle Paul goes on in verse 7. To each, to each is given, what? The manifestation of the Spirit. This is how the Spirit shows himself. For the common good. I've said this previously and I'll say it again. Your gifts and your calling is for you, but it's not about you. God gives it for you, right? It's not for your exaltation. It's not for your glory. It is for a greater story that is beyond you. God gives these things to each of us so that we can benefit those around us for the common good. Paul goes on and tells us, for to one is given to the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. These are certain gifts, and there are others. And to others, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To, uh, to uh, another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, uh, various kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he, that is, God, wills. I do believe that the gifting of the Holy Spirit continues to this day. These empowerments make a difference. You can... Tighten down a screw with a manual screwdriver. Have any of you done that before, right? Good time, right? Or you can use a power drill and do the same thing with a lot less effort because there you have been empowered by another source. God longs to empower his people to accomplish his will. Do you hear me? He gives to us gifts, but we can also ask for them. There's lots more to say about that in this passage. If you're curious, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, other places, talks about this. We are to fan into flame the gift of God that is within you. We have responsibility in using, developing 
manifesting whatever you want to say, these things. But each one has been gifted by God. Again, in 1 Corinthians, it says this, each has his or her own gift from God. This is 1 Corinthians 7. One of one kind, one of another. Understand this. Understand how God has put you together. Pay attention to this. Seek these things out. This is, this, this is God's equipping of us. One of my favorite passages in all of Scripture is the next one we're turning to. This is Ephesians chapter 2. And there is a combining of two deeply held and powerful theological truths put together. Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? This isn't on the screen, but this is how it starts. Okay? For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourself. You cannot save yourself. Only Jesus can do that. Okay? By his grace. You cannot earn it. You cannot merit it. He has done. All we can do is receive it and believe what he's done for us. Right? So the basis of our salvation is the grace of God. And we receive it through faith. And this is not from ourselves. It's a gift of God. Verse 9, not by works, so that no one can boast. You will never get up to heaven, knock on the door if it works like that, which it doesn't, but, you know, this is an illustration. Say, hi, I'm here. Where's my palace? You obviously want me on your team because I am awesome, right? It's not going to work like that, even though you're kind of cool, <laughs> but you don't, you can't earn your way in. So the basis of our salvation is what Christ has done for us. Now, 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 built upon that truth is connected to this, okay? This is in verse 10. So now knowing that we are saved by grace through faith, we haven't earned it, it's a gift from God, then this is connected to this. For we are God's work. Manship. Creation, masterpiece, depends on your translation. For we are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus. Do you know that God has made you, designed you, gifted you? Do you remember growing up being in junior high school or high school, right? And hating something about yourself. Especially junior high. Junior high is rough, right? You're like, amen, amen. Pray for our junior high teachers. They got a rough job. Right? Remember, right? Like you were kind of growing, you're like weird or feel weird, <laughs> awkward. None of you were like that. I was like that. I was like that. Like, yeah, dude, we know. <laughs> you're still like that. <laughs> Remember being fixated on something you didn't like about yourself, right? <laughs> Lenny's like, no, I'm perfect. <laughs> Lenny does not struggle with self-esteem. I'll just put that. I'll put this up here. Uh. It's like, no, I'm beautiful. Yeah, all right. Everyone besides Lenny, right, we struggle at times. <laughs> know that God has made you with your mind, your temperament. That's purposeful. I don't know if you were a planned pregnancy or if you were not, but you were planned by God. Okay. Hear me. Okay. Planned, designed, woven together in Christ Jesus. Why? Well, obviously to attend church services, right? Is that the pinnacle? Right. It's not the pinnacle, right? Cars were made to go places, right? Now, it's important that cars have fuel, 
okay? That is important, and we get fueled up, we get strengthened, we get repaired, we get adjusted, we get connected. These things are important. The cars weren't meant to sit in a garage, they were meant to go someplace, to do some things, to make a difference. You were created in Christ Jesus for what? To do good works. Do your good works save you? I want to hear no right there. That's what I want to hear. No? They don't? So why is this important? It's evidence that you already saved, not to merit your salvation. We do exhibit, we follow Christ because we're made to do that. We were made, created to do good things. Was God prepared in advance for us to do? And some of these things we do together in community is important, it is vital. It is how God also knit us together, and we can do more together than separate. However, God also has prepared certain things that only you can do. I'm not going to your family reunion, right? You are. I don't work where you work. You do. You have specific things. God has prepared, preordained, and advanced for you to do. What if you got up in the morning with these verses on your heart and you and I prayed, God will you help me to see what good you want me and have for me to do today. I want to encourage you to think that way, to pray that way in the morning. If you do that, you'll have a different mindset. Do any of you guys complain about work? Uh Uh-huh. Let us tell the truth. Or school, or whatever you're doing, your neighbors, right? Complaining is not a spiritual gift. Some of you are very gifted. It's a gift nobody needs or wants. Do this. Do this. This is scripture. Okay? I want you to think in the morning. Thank God for your salvation. Renew your faith in Christ. We can do that individually. We do that corporately. We'll do that in communion today. But also connected to that, I want you to think, God, what good thing have you had for me to do today? And focus on that. Let success be defined by doing the good work that God has for you that day. Instead of, oh God, I hope people treat me well today. They might not treat you well. The will of God might be when people treat you poorly, you respond with kindness, right? Are you hearing me? Sometimes we get jacked up on our prayers, right? We think the universe revolves around us. It doesn't. It revolves around Christ and his will, right? So we say, God, regardless of what happens today, I trust that you have something for me to do, a good work today. Help me to see it. Help me to know it. Help me to follow it. Help me to be empowered. You guys understand that, right? We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Think about it. Pray about it. Focus on it. You will see God working and you will know what to do. First point, you are gifted. Every single one of you. Gifted. So if we have these gifts and we do, then what is next? 
then we are responsible to use your gifts. Responsible. God gives us and he expects us to do something with it. First Peter chapter 4, starting with verse 10, says this. As each has received a gift, there it is again, use it. <laughs> Circle that, underline it, use it. That is a command, it is more than a suggestion. You and I are responsible for what has been given to us, and we are to use it. How? To build your 401k. Right? <clears throat> no, I'm nothing against 401ks. But if retirement is the goal of your life, you have a very bad goal. God's goal for us is to become like Christ. And God employs us in his kingdom, regardless if you work at Chrysler or regardless where you work. In the kingdom of God, there is zero unemployment. Zero. We are to use our gifts to serve others. As what? Good stewards, recognizing we have been given something, didn't come from us, it was been given to us by God, right? And we have a responsibility, we've good stewards of God's varied grace, it's grace, given to us what we don't deserve. Now, he gives some examples, whoever speaks, speak as one who speaks, as God is. There's confidence in this and trusting God to work. Whoever serves, do it in the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything, God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. And to him, God belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. We say, amen. So we are gifted and then we have a responsibility to glorify God in using your gifts. When you pull weeds outside, you're glorifying God. You are. When you help people merge into traffic, you are glorifying God. When you pray, yes, of course. When you serve, yes, of course. We are glorifying God in this, and if we refuse to use the gifts God gives us, we are refusing to give God glory. How do you like them apples? Right? Well, I glorify God. I'm glad you're here in the pew, but what you doing out there? Right? I go to church, well, that's good. Cars with gas in them helps, but do something. <laughs> so that God may be glorified. Then the church, this can happen, should happen, must happen. This is how we love each other. So look for a need and fulfill it. And then in the greater community, we also have responsibility. This is Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, saying to his disciples, also saying to us, and this is what he says about you. He says, you are, you, 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 I don't know about you, just kidding. <laughs> He's not even paying attention to me. I'm going to preach right in front of you, bro. You are the salt of the earth, right? And we could preach in all of these for a long time. You are the salt of the earth. <laughs> that means when you're there, you should enhance the goodness of what is already there. Right? Your presence should make things better, right? Some of you are just salty, salty, right? 
You know what I mean? But we're here to make things better and also to hinder things getting worse, right? Back in the day, you put salt on meats, not just to enhance the flavor, but to preserve their natural decaying process. People and their flesh don't get better over time. They get what? Worse! So we are here in society to help preserve the goodness and help preserve it from not deteriorating. There's lots more to be said there, but you are the salt of the earth. But hey, if the salt loses its saltiness, it's worthless. Worthless. Meaning, if we are just the same as everyone around us, what's the point of your Christianity? Well, I'm saved. It's not all about you. We must connect with the world in the spirit of Christ, which transforms the world. But if we're no different than anybody else, your Christianity and your quote-unquote faith is worthless. Don't get mad at me, Jesus said that. Now, he says, you are the light of the world. Now, Jesus says he is the light, but he puts his light inside of us and puts us in places like Rockford, Illinois. Right? You are the light of the world. Now, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it up on a stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house, in your workplace. Shine Christ light. Now, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Why? So they can see how great you are? Fooey. May we become invisible so Christ becomes visible. So that they may see your good deeds and glorify who? Your your Father. God may put crabby people in your life so you can glorify them by loving them. And if you're the crabby person, that's another conversation. Oh, God, remove all the crabby people from in front of me. Not a good prayer. Here's a better prayer. Oh, God, help me be a light to all the crabby people in front of me. What if Christians did that? Thank you. There may not be so many crabby people. Thank you. When you shine your light... God is glorified. So engage yourself. Now James, Jesus' half-brother, biological half-brother, the apostle, writes his hard-hitting epistle letter to the church called the book of James. He just cuts to the punch He says this in chapter 2, verse 14 of his letter. He says, hey, what good is it, my brothers, my sisters? And someone says, he or she has faith, but they don't show it. They do not have work. Can that faith save him? That's interesting. We'll come back to it. If a brother or sister is pearly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, oh, go in peace, be warm and filled, without giving them the things they need for the body, what good is that? Well, I'll pray for you, brother. So also faith by itself, it is, does not have works, is what? What does it say? Yeah. Dead. 
That's it. But someone will say, well, you have faith, I have works. Well, show me your faith, depart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. We do not do good things to be saved. Right? It's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. We're saved by grace. However, if you are saved by grace, then it will be evidenced in how you live. Do you hear me? In a couple months, when we get to John chapter 15, we're going to come back there. Okay, we're going to go back to John in September. Okay. We're going to talk about how you know a, know a tree. You know it by what it produces. So if you and I are truly in Christ, then what is produced from our abiding being in him is God's fruit working from us. Okay. Different sermon, but it applies so if you say, I believe in Christ, and I go to your home and say, hey, go tell me about Dave, or I go to your workplace and I say, yeah, that's the crabbiest person I know, they're arrogant, they're self-centered, and no one likes working with them. That's a problem. Well, if they weren't that way, I wouldn't be this way. Oh, okay. So now other people control how you respond to things? So now they're in charge. You gave your life over to other people, right? So you're their puppet. Is that what you're telling me? Well, well, well. Well, well, nothing. You are responsible for you. You're not going to give an account for other people. You're going to give account for you. I hear you back there, Deb. I hear you. One of these days, I'm going to put her in here. and You better all watch out. I think that's Deb. It's Deb, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. Come on, girl. Let's go. I hear you. <laughs> you want to ever get excited, go sit next to Deb. She will charge you up. It's one of her gifts, by the way. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll do what? Thank you. Someone knows that verse. If you love me, John 14, you will keep my commandments. So if you say you love God and you don't keep his commandments, you don't love God. What? Right there. This is the connection here, right? Philippians 2, another verse. It's all over scripture, okay? So these are hard. There's so much text to work with. Paul is telling the church what he's telling us. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Do you catch that first? Not saying work hard so that you are saved, but you work hard. You will employ yourself. You give yourself. Work hard. Why? To show the results of your salvation. How? Obeying God. How? Deep reverence and fear. I just want to sink that in. For God is working in you. This verse, by the way, has a lot of hope. For God is working in you. Doing what? Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Do you always feel like you want to do God's will? I don't. Number one, some days I don't even know what God's will is, and I have to pray for clarity. God, what is your will? But I don't even do that because sometimes I don't have the desire. Here's the good news. Right? God gives us his desire, 
right? The desire, and he gives you power to do his will. So if you say, I don't, I don't want to love my husband. He's a crap. I got you. He might be a crap, right? Well, I don't want to. Well, guess what? I have good news for you. I want you to pray. Pray for what? The desire that you want to. Because God's desire is that you will love your crabby husband. So God, will you today give me your desire and give me your power to do what your will is? I'm not asking you to even muster it up, even though, uh, granted, we have to fan the flame. But I'm asking you to pray. Say, God, tomorrow... Not only will you help me understand your will, but God, will you give me the power to do your will? And God, beyond that, will you give me even the desire because I don't have any of it? God says, I got you. Right? Another great prayer. In the morning, God, give me the desire to do your will. Give me your power. God, help me to understand. Help me to please you today. If you live like this, you will be living as a Christian. You hear me. So you are gifted, you are responsible. Last thing, ultimately, you are accountable. I am accountable to God for the gifts that he has given to us. This is where the fear factors in. This is where the reverence factors in. There is joy in serving. There is reward in serving. But we have to recognize that we are accountable. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Okay? And this is not a guilt trip. This is a spiritual reality. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. How many people? All. Scripture is true. Then this is true. There is life beyond this life. And a part of that is giving an account. For we must all appear... Before the judgment seat of Christ. Why? So that each one may receive what is due for what he or she has done while in this body. Whether good or evil. Now this should cause us to pause. Your final isn't at the end of the semester. It's at the end of your life. That is the test in which you best be prepared. And the question is, what did you do with what he's given? And if we took what he gave and leveraged it for his glory, there will be great reward. However, if we took what he gave and we buried it in the sand. There will be great loss. Your choice. I don't want you to coast into eternity. I want you to skid in going 120 miles an hour. <laughs> Man, that was a great ride. Come on. What are you doing? And I'll be there wherever. I don't know how this works. I want, man, I want to be there applauding them. It's like, yeah, way to go. And I'm telling you now, right? We're called to spur one another on right? to love and good deeds. Here's a spur, friends. Get going, right? <laughs> well, you know, I don't got the time. I don't feel like it. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too... Stop it. I said it with all the love in my heart, but good grief. If you're not using your gift for the glory of God, that's on you. Now, granted, I'll try to help but far as I read, that God has prepared good things for you to do. And we have an option, an opportunity to either to do them or not, to follow his will or to not. 
think about this. This, live your life for that moment. Do you hear me? The moment in which we are standing in front of Christ. Keep going. Well, I'm retired. No, you're not. You're not retired. You're not retired. Granted, you might be retooled. Granted, there are times of rest. But you were not made for it. You were made for Christ. To engage with what he's doing. There's parables in Scripture that talk about this. Matthew 25 talks about this. If we steward our lives well, there will be reward and there will be great reward. And if we don't, there's going to be loss. For to whom much has been given, much is required. You know that one. You've been given a lot, by the way. Well, you know, I'm not a millionaire. Have you ever been to Africa? I've gone. Have you ever been to India? No. Well, you know, whatever. You guys, you've been given so much. Well, I don't have as much as so-and-so. That's not the point. What are you doing with what you've been given versus bemoaning what you don't have? Use what you do have. And get going. (laughs) The greatest among you will be your, what's the word? Servant. Matthew 25. Recognize again, it's not about you. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever chooses to serve. It's an honor to serve. Whoever chooses to serve, God will exalt that person. It is called descending into greatness. So get small so God can make much of himself and say, well done, my good and faithful what? You know that one as well. I'm going to come in for a landing. I want you to remember three things, friend. And I don't know what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today, okay? Because I've talked about a lot. There's a thousand more things we can talk about. Just talking about three. I want you to do business with God today. And perhaps you're here and say, well, I don't know what my gift is. Then ask Him. Ask those who know you. Examine yourself, the inward gifting, so you can understand the outward working. Pay attention. That's maybe you today. You need to develop that. Second, not only are you gifted, but you are responsible. (laughs) Take my challenge of that prayer. God, what would you have me to do today? Give me the desire and the power to do that thing. Help me, God, to make a difference. Amen. When my kids were young, I would often say to them, I want you to go mad today. M-A-D. Go make a difference. I told them that most every day. And guess what? They're still doing it. I brainwashed them. (laughs) I didn't say, oh, I hope you have a good day. I hope the bullies don't beat on you. I hope that all, all the birds are singing and all the lights are green and you get a parking spot in the front row to the glory of God. (laughs) I didn't say that. I didn't say, oh, God protect you. Okay. Can God protect them? Yeah. I said, no, no, no. You'd be a force for good today. We are called to be on the offensive. Light overcomes dark when light shines. But if it's not shining, the darkness wins. So go shine. That might be you today. You might need to engage yourself. You come in here, and you're warming a pew. I'm glad because we're cold. You warm that pew. But do something. Leverage it. 
inside the church, outside the church, in the community. I want you to ask God, how can I do this? In recognition that ultimately you're going to give an account. Now, through the years when people have, and I really will end with this, <laughs> um, through the years when, when people have said, hey, you know, the Lord's calling me to a different place, a different church, I said, okay, awesome. Sad, we'll miss you. But when you go, make sure, number one, that that place preaches the word of God. And number two, get involved, right? Preaches the word of God and do something. Use your gift. Why? You do it because you're accountable for it. You're responsible for it. And you are gifted. So get busy. And some of y'all might need to do that. I don't know. So I'm going to pray for us and we're going to transition to communion. Ushers will get ready. Yeah. If you need more prayer, folks will be there. The sign says prayer. They'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Say, hey, pray for me. I'll pray for you. Okay. But let's pray right now, and then we'll transition. So God, here we are. Lord, we're gathered together as your body here in Rockford in this place. God, of course, connected to other churches. But God, you put us here in this platoon to be together. God, I ask that you would ultimately be glorified in our life and through our life because you are good and all you do is good. Now, I don't know um, exactly all that people are hearing today, but God, I ask that each one of us hears something. And Lord, will you highlight that thing in our mind and heart now deeply so it isn't left in this room, but it's, we leave with it in our hearts. And God, I ask that the faith we have would be turned into actions, recognizing that faith without its expression, without its work, is worthless, is dead. God, thank you for gifting us as a congregation, as individuals. Help us. Empower us. We're willing. And make us willing if we're not. So that you will be glorified to the ends of the earth. So God, I ask that you would fan the flame, your gift in this place. You fan to flame. And that we'll do busy, and we'll get busy <laughs> before we give an account, God. Doing in your power and your strength what you've called us to do. May you be praised and glorified in all things. In Jesus' name, amen.